Warhammer 40,000 Sanctus Reach. Is it worth a buy? Let's read the words, the words of Slytherin, Slither, Slither. Actually, Slytherin is the publisher. The developer is Streelight Entertainment. So, who cares? Let's hear some words. Warhammer 40k Sanctus Reach is a 3D turn-based strategy game like you've never seen before. Yeah. Fast? No, I've seen fast. Immediate? I've definitely seen immediate. Deep? I've seen deep. Impressive to look at? Mm, yeah, I've seen that. And incredibly fun? seen that so yeah fight through the dark era of carnage and endless war and lead the space wolves in a struggle to defend the last bastard of mankind i mean bastion of mankind yes guys this is sanctus reach and i'm still loaded with cold so if i sniffle and snuffle and snuffle well tough shit it's a grid based uh strategy game not hex based grid based and it's good fun. It's based on the 40k world, which I know very little about, um, other than walking past the games workshop with my son in the metro centre and pretending to distract him as he walks past for fear that he may want to some time go in there and be uh, taken in by the blue-haired women and scraggly neck beard people and start painting miniatures on a Saturday morning instead of doing something that's not painting miniatures. I'm not saying that anyone who does that is some kind of freak. I'm not saying... In fact, I'd rather him do that than go and do drugs. But still... You know... You're not going to get a girlfriend in there, are you? I mean, you're not, are you? Seriously, though, you know. What do you say to a girl on the channel blind? So, so what do you do in your spare time, Robert? I paint miniatures at Games Workshop. It's fun. You should come down someday. I'm currently painting a Orc Warboss Grok Face Ripper and Margog the Mangler. It's really good fun. You may even enjoy the game. Sorry, this is bad. And why am I alienating people? Doesn't look, look, look. This review doesn't start off well. If you do this kind of stuff, good on you. Greater man are you than the man who goes out clubbing, drinking, smoking drugs and f***ing women. Greater are you that stands in the Games Workshop painting High King of Fenris. You know? You don't wake up the next day with a f***ing hangover vomiting into a bucket. No, no. You wake up alone. Can we just get on with this? So basically, this, this game is a strategy game. It's turn-based, and as you work your way through the campaign, Z, because there's two campaigns, you unlock more units. And the good thing about this is your units level up with XP. Now, there is a problem with the way the units level up in my eyes, and that is that only the killing unit gets XP. So, for example, if three of your units firing at one orc unit for example and the last guy who fires at him kills the orc unit only he gets the xp and i think that's a bit greedy uh, because all of the guys took a turn to um kill it now I, i'm a huge battle isle fan i played battle isle back in the i think it'll probably be the 80s it's one of the best hex based games ever made made by blue bite and that had a very similar uh thing the xp leveling up from the one that got the kill and you know i thought we would have evolved a bit past that and while i'm on the having a dig at the game i want to have a dig at line of sight you can shoot through freaking hills now i streamed this the other day and one of the guys in the stream actually said that's because you, even if you can see the top of the head it's on a tabletop game because it's based on the tabletop game you can get the hit well i don't like that in a computer arena and i think that should be changed and I know the devs are aware of it, and I do think they're going to be checking uh, on the line of sight on the hills. So, that out the way, is it any good? Yes, it is. I love it. I actually love this game. Because, it's not because of how it looks. It looks very tabletop. The, the graphics are meant to look tabletop, and I think they've done a great job on them. They do look like miniatures. They don't look like computer-generated um characters that you would see in a computer game for example they look like computer generated miniatures from the tabletop game which i quite like but what i like best 
is the price. No, that's just a quarter up commando. What I like best is is the way that the games actually play. You select the units that you want. You're given a set amount of money to spend, and each unit is worth um, a set amount. For example, a claw unit, which consists of four who have these claws. Uh, they're melee. They cost a hundred. Then you have for 120, you get the um, uh, one, one, and they can shoot. And then for 300, you get the big stuff, one, and they can shoot and do all kinds of stuff. And lots of different people have different loadouts as well. Some are flamers, some are just storm boulders, some are um, other things. And there's lots, there's lots of different things that they fire, and some of them look really good. You also have artillery, you have vehicles, and you have mechs. They're not mechs, Mac. Come on. We're talking 40k. Mac, you're showing that you know nothing about 40k. I know what they're called. I know what I know what the mechs is called. I know exactly what the mechs is called. I know exactly what the mechs is called. They are called Space Marines. Dreadnoughts. They are dreadnoughts. They're dreadnoughts. So you have uh, dreadnoughts which are like mechs, but obviously they're not mechs. Everybody knows that. Um, and they are awesome. They can have different weapons on them. They have like a power fist, so you can like fist people, which is fun, apparently. And they have flamers on, which set fire to people, and they have uh, storm bolters on, which shoot people. Now, on top of all that, you have vehicles, other vehicles. You have rhinos, which are troop APC transporters. And let me just tell you how the APCs work, because I like it and a few people don't, but with a, a, an APC in this game, um, you can load a shitload of troops in them. You know, they could have um, storm bolters, flamethrower units, and these other guys who have these melt guns that just melt people, they're really cool. And you can drive the APC to a certain place on the map, then the people can get out, fire their shit, even move a bit around in their shit, and fire their shit, then get back in to the actual rhino after they've done it all in one turn. So it's like jump out, all right, bam, 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 you're dead, goodbye, I'm going back in here in case your mates are around. I like that, because normally in a, any every strategy game I've ever played in my life, whenever you exit or enter a, a, a PC, that's your turn. That was your turn. And I found that very hard, and I like this because it's very easy, and I like easy because easy makes me feel good and making me feel good boosts my ego. <sighs> Anyway, let's get on to the actual gameplay, shall we? What happens is you pick your units after you've spent your money and then you deploy them. And then you have to have the fight with the orcs. Now, this is where it gets a bit weak because the fights are generally all the same. There's not much of a variety in the campaign. It's kind of like, hey, whoever at the end of your turns, because it's generally, you know, six or eight turns per game, whoever has the most VPs, victory points, wins. The other way you can win is by destroying all of the enemy units, which is kind of what I do. I kind of just defend up somewhere. The orcs will just come at me because they're thick as mince, and then I just mow them down, and then that's the end. But thankfully, doing that is tremendous fun. It really is good fun. And you have to think, you have to use strategy, because you have to use the right weapon against the right enemy. You can't just go lol, open fire, ruffle, ruffle. That will get you killed. You have to make sure that you're using the right weapon on the... Just the right tool for the job, essentially. Now, flaming units are great because what they can do, they can damage the enemy morale. You can also stun them with grenades so they can't move for a couple of turns. You can set ambushes for them as well. And you have overwatch mode. And overwatch mode is awesome because what overwatch mode is, is when you've finished moving your unit, you can select them overwatching a certain area. And if any enemy units enter that area, in that arc of the area, they will get fired at from that unit. So you essentially have a little bit of defense uh, against enemy attacks and I love that and as I mentioned earlier there's artillery units which can fire right across the map providing you have line of sight with another unit so you can see where the enemy are because it's all fog of war the map which is another thing that I like and so you've got all the ingredients for a really brutal game and these battles are brutal and they are big and they get messy and you lose your good units and you cry rivers into tissues because you were leveling them up and then they're gone they're gone and if you're a wussy little wanker you will reload the game again and just get them back and then not get them killed but that means you cheated because that means you aren't a space marine that means you'll never be able to grow a straggly beard paint the miniatures and get a blue-haired girlfriend who wears a marvel t-shirt 
it has two campaigns this it has a, a beginner's kind of campaign and then a you are not a beginner's campaign which where it gets really hard there are some kind of diverse missions where you have to get something across the other side of the map alive but i just didn't i just defended ground xp on that mission that it needs some tweaking it, it really does need a bit of tweaking now altogether it has 30 space wolf units and 30 orc gorf units sorry goff units gorf remember gorf the arcade machine from the 80s I am the Gorf in. No, it's also got multiplayer, so you can play skirmish against um, other players. They are going to add different skirmish modes. I've already read that, and they are constantly bug fixing on the forum. So they're giving this a lot of love at the minute. And you do just just bear in mind, you do need an account with Slytherin if you are going to play multiplayer, which I don't really like. But you're using their servers, so you know at the end of the day, at the end of the day. Um, but there you go guys if you are into 40k then it's a no-brainer go and buy it if you're not into 40k but you do like these kind of turn-based strategy games then get it because this is one of the best we've had some bad ones and let's be honest nearly every 40k game that's been released in the past few years is wank i've reviewed a few of them i mean total war's good but at the end of the day right this is a decent turn-based game. I'm having a lot of fun with it. I've been streaming it a few times and there's plenty of life left in the old dog yet. I'm going to finish it and uh, it's definitely worth a buy. Two campaigns, over 20 missions and skirmishes and 60 different units. Got to be worth a buy. <laughs>